So here we go. Welcome to the parallel session on biogas. My name is Katharina Krell. I'm a somatic expert for low carbon economy. So I'm responsible for energy and uh, mobility topics uh, inside of the Inter Europe uh, policy learning platform. And I'll be moderating uh, this uh, parallel session. In the next 45 minutes, we will hear three good practices about biogas and discuss them. So to this end, we have uh, three presenters. We have uh, Pekka Mayala, Linda Genanda and Christos Karkanis. I will introduce you more in detail when you come to your speeches. And as a discussant, we have the pleasure to have uh, Mieke de Korte, uh, who has already been uh, challenged uh, to answer a lot of questions uh, in the opening session. And Mika will ask our presenters questions after their flash presentations. And uh, I invite the audience uh, to continue making use of the chat uh, as intensely as you've done so far. You can ask uh, questions to the speakers as well. And uh, uh, then afterwards, uh, we will have a little roundtable discussion with all the speakers. So without uh, further ado, I hand over to uh, Pekka Mayela. So he's from uh, uh, Peja Järvi Institute uh, in Finland uh, and um, member of the LCR for Regions uh, project. So Pekka, over to you, please. So hello, everybody. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so this is very brief uh, presentation and I'll try to be quick. So uh, I'm here to, it's very happy to hear to, to present, uh, present uh, good practice. Uh, and then, uh, and, and I will explain very briefly the LCA for regions project where, where this good practice was uh, part of. And then I will finish about some words about the Finnish biogas program. Um, now I must, I must get, click again. Okay, so, so this uh, good practice uh, is, is uh, the title is processing alternatives of biodegradable waste. And uh, one of them is anaerobic digestion. Uh, uh, the, the how, how to treat it or for energy or for biofuel and 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 this study was established in 2014 so it's a, it's not a brand new um, <clears throat> but the, I will explain why this was done and uh, and why it is uh, selected for our LCA for regions project first, few words because uh, about LCA as such because uh, it's LCA of course is a, is a procedure uh, trying to understand better the the world behind the products or services and and as illustrated here in the picture so so it's not so simple if we say that we drive a, a, a person says that we drive a clean car but if the electricity that the car uses comes from a very polluting uh, factory or if it's uh, burning coal for instance so we may ask whether it's uh, really uh, a clean car now lca can be used for different purposes and and uh, it can be used for comparative impact assessments type of studies like done in this good practice and <clears throat> In the LCA for regions projects, of course, the idea is to improve the awareness of uh, LCA as a tool to for uh, public authorities and municipalities how to how to guide the, the strategies and, and and policies in 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 uh, societies. And uh, and behind that, well, this good practice is of course the background here is the the waste hierarchy idea that we should we should be able to uh, <clears throat> select the, the the best way to to treat our biodegradable waste and and EU, EU the idea came from EU that we should study study the the, the those best routes and 
and uh, Finnish Environment Institute uh, was was given the the study role and and has made this uh, comparative study. Uh, and in Finland, we have quite nice background data available, so then we can use different uh, different databases such as Biomass Atlas, which has which is which contains uh, lots of information about bio biomass production in different areas uh, in Finland. Uh, well, the other picture here on the on the right describes some sort of uh, uh, system uh, in the region where I come from and in, in the Satakunta region, so that it's, it's an important area for different food industries. And of course, uh, agriculture. And of course, uh, we, we have a lot of uh, persons and to live in, in the area. So there's markets and consumers also affecting the, the biodegradable waste production. Uh, the results of the study I, I think that I, I will not read this uh, slide. You can you can have it afterwards. Uh, so, but uh, we we found out in the study that that uh, the the best bio waste processing option uh, when we think about environmental impact is the is this anaerobic digestion route. Uh, but um, and uh, of course, there's a, then different um, uh, different uh, kind of a. It's important to think then, and, and what what is the what is the uh, what is the process that uh, this route then uh, replaces, and it's uh, then the, the results are uh, uh, dependent on on what what is the system that that the uh, for instance, the anaerobic digestion replaces whether it replaces fossil fuel uh, burning, or, or for instance. But anyway, the, the, this, these results were used in the Finnish Waste Act preparation, which was the main uh, goal, and uh, also it was used uh, in launching the preparation of Finnish by a national biogas program. And if I go, okay, before going to this biogas program, I was just shown that uh, Miku was uh, already presenting uh, one slide about the biogas plant production uh, development in Finland. Uh, now, nowadays, there is over a, a little, little bit more than 200 uh, biogas uh, plants in Finland, and it's increasing since, since 2016, especially. And, and, and at the moment, the Finnish government is quite uh, in favor of, of, of biogas. Biogas uh, is trying to support biogas program, which, uh, which is quite a nice thing. Now, now as you can see, the, uh, the report, which was uh, launched 2019, uh, there was a working group established, and uh, this was uh, kind of a background here is the several ministries in Finland uh, within this preparation of biogas program. And the report was published uh, 2020 in January, and the, the working group consisted of different kinds of experts in the area. And, and I just recently dis was discussing with the representative representative of ministries and, and, and they told me that this biogas uh, report program report which was not itself in the original phase uh, meant to be the biogas program but it, it will be used as such uh, nowadays uh, today and uh, <clears throat> this report describes the current state of the biogas sector in Finland and related policy instruments it provides so uh, uh, opinions of the most significant obstacles and barriers in the biogas sector. Uh, and the most significant challenges arise from the poor profitability of biogas op operations and, and, and steps could be taken to improve profitability 
and there is now uh, like two points uh, lowering the investments costs and costs arising from agricultural inputs and increasing the sale price of the end products and the end products here uh, includes also the the uh, natural fertilizing compounds uh, so so nutrient recycling is is uh, highlighted here that it's important that while producing biogas so that the, as an end product uh, such a soil uh, uh, kind of a products that enhance soil quality and that that the nutrients can be brought back into the soils in these from these plants now, important point here is the taxation system, and 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 in Finland next year, starting next year, the 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 extending the coverage of the biofuel distribution obligation is is, is a important step here in Finland. Uh, that it's starting next year, so that the the energy suppliers that uh, uh, should include. Uh, um, bio-based uh, energy products and and biogas will be one of those so so this means a new kind of new pra uh, taxation practices for biomethane but uh, we don't know at the moment so how how it, it's going to function okay becca mm -hmm. that was 10 minutes instead of okay four. sorry <laughs> i know is it your final word <laughs> Okay, but uh, yes, but there, there you can read afterwards then the, 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 the rest of them. So, and, and, and there was some fund, funding, you were asking for funding, but that's, uh, there is some funding available uh, now to, to promote this, these ideas at the moment. But it's an, an on, ongoing process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mika, over to you for some questions. Yes, I, I have uh, one question for you, um, and this is also a bit related to what I what I had uh, presented. That you see that in um, in Finland, from bio waste, some plant operators they choose to produce uh, biogas without upgrading, um, and other operators they choose to uh, to upgrade to biomethane uh, to well to upgrade to biomethane, and I was wondering if. Um, if there are specific reasons for the choices of the of this for this choice of the operators, I think that the, the main main uh, choice could be the financial situation. That the 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 primary investment cost for for cleaning the bio uh, cli cleaning the biogas is is quite requires quite a high investments. Uh, I've understood this might be a, a good point that, that now this is a question I thought people, if, if it's for for traffic purpose so that the, at the moment I think it's an uncertainty is whether whether the tra in traffic the the biogas will be uh, 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 an option to choose at the moment I think that the hype is now more on electric vehicles and and so on and that might causes some some uh, uncertainties whether whether to invest for uh, traffic uh, traffic gas production I, I think this could be one of the main reasons okay thank you do you have another question or should I take over uh, you, you can take over if I have another other one I I can jump in um, I have one that follows uh, on yours, actually, um, Becca, you have uh, shown on your slide that uh, uh, anaerobic digestion is the best option in terms of life cycle analysis and uh, upgrading to biomethane the worst. So can you elaborate why that is? Is it because it is such an energy intensive uh, process or what, what turns the, the balance down? Um. I think, uh, if I remember now correctly, yes, yes, I, I, I believe that mm -hmm. this is what I told to Mika that uh, uh, it could be that the, at the moment the, the 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 cleaning cost is is relatively high, 
as, 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 as such. Yeah, but I don't mean the cost. I mean yeah. uh, the environmental impact. Uh, uh, because you, you said the life cycle analysis uh, uh, impact is the best option is anaerobic digestion and the worst uh, is, uh, is, is upgrading to biomethane. So I can only explain mm -hmm. that to myself because I know that it takes a lot of energy to uh, upgrade uh, biogas to biomethane. I think you lose another 25% of uh, the energy that you've just generated. It, it could be, uh, I, I guess I, I could turn back to you later to, to confirm that this option. <laughs> yes, I will do it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay, super. Well, then uh, let's move on. Uh, I would like to hand over to uh, Linda Genander from the, I guess that's technical works of Lin Chöping in Sweden. And uh, Linda, the floor is yours. Thank you. Let's see if you can see my presentation now. Can you hear me? I hear you. I don't see your presentation. No. This was working fine just some minutes ago. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> Magda, I can you share again? it for Linda? I, um, let me try okay. again, please. Okay. Try again and I can share it if you... Won't be successful. <laughs> At least I learned how to pronounce Lin Chöping ahead <laughs> of your presentation. <laughs> Good, now we can see your screen. Just turn to full slide mode. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry, it's... Uh, if you click yeah. on Fisningsl, up there, you should be able to select. Uh, yes, there we go. Mm, there we go. And now it's good. Now it's good. And then I'm just going to do this. Oh, good. Yes, I am Linda uh, from Lean Shopping. Uh, and I work at Tekniska Verken, which is uh, a fully owned uh, um, company, which is fully owned by the municipality of Lean Shopping. Uh, and I am going to uh, briefly explain our system with collecting food waste in the green bag system. Uh, and uh, in uh, Sweden, we have a national target that uh, by 2023, at least 75% of uh, the food waste from household commercial kitchens Shops or restaurants uh, should be sorted out and treated biologically uh, so that plant nutrients are utilized and also that energy is recovered in the form of biogas. Uh, this target was before 50% by uh, 2018. So um, this is a more ambitious goal. And also um, now it has been pinpointed that it, we are supposed to produce biogas by it. Uh, but when we started this uh, 10 years ago, uh, this spring, um, uh, we did that um, because of this goal. Uh, and one of the great advantages with this uh, system is that, that it is possible to use the same collection system as before the implementation. The households uh, can throw away the green bag uh, in the same container as they used before. Uh, and um, uh, it's important just to do the action to actually put your food waste in the green bag. Uh, I should have said that as well. Uh, the green bag is a smaller plastic bag that uh, are uh, distributed free of charge to all of the households uh, in the municipality of Linköping uh, for the household to use for their food waste. Uh, but that is the action that the household needs to do. The rest of the treatment uh, is made by Tekniska Verken. Uh, important for this project was, uh, and still is, the marketing and information efforts. Uh, I would say that is a success factor for the whole system. It's very important that each and everyone understands what to do. It depends on well-sorted food waste and uh, it also depends on the fact that you need to uh, make uh, knots on the waste bags so that 
uh, the bags are well prepared for going through an optical sorting facility, which is the next step after we have collected them. Uh, in Linköping, uh, more than 80% of the residents use the green bag, and today we collect approximately 50% of all food waste, waste in Linköping separately. Uh, but this number has changed over the years, uh, I would say. Um, the food waste needs, uh, of course, to be treated in different steps, which requires investments in sites and treatment facilities, as we have uh, spoken of earlier here today. Um, the advantage is uh, that, this, um, that they can be used by other municipalities around the region. They can buy the treatment service uh, for the food waste from Tekniska uh, And uh, this is how it works then. Um, we call it the loop of the green bag. I don't know if you can see, but here is number one. It starts with a household. So here uh, the residents sort their food waste. Uh, and then they put the green bag in the same container as uh, the other household waste. Um, so they can use the same container as before. Then we collect it. Uh, and then it reaches uh, our optic, uh, optical sorting facility. Uh, and here, the green bags are sorted out from the rest of the bags with residual waste. So it passes different stations where a camera sensor can detect the green uh, color of the bags and then efficiently push this away. And as you can see, it goes to a line here into a separate container where the green bags ends up. The rest of the bags with the residual waste uh, goes directly into our waste uh, to energy incineration plants. Um, and um, from that energy, we produce heat and electricity for, uh, for the municipality wind shopping. So nothing goes to waste really. Uh, but the green bags then uh, are transported uh, to our biogas plant, which, which is seven kilometers away uh, from uh, this uh, optical sorting plant. And the first step here is a pre-treatment of the organic waste. Uh, <clears throat> and here, um, um, the bags are pushed or pressed into this first step so that uh, the plastic Uh, so, so that it can be processed through um, the biogas plant. Yeah. And the bags goes back to the waste to energy incineration plant and the food waste moves further on into our waste to energy uh, plant, uh, but through digestion plant. So first the pretreatment system and then it's pumped in to a phase where it's heated up and then uh, the next step is uh, into uh, <clears throat> the tanks where the digesters are uh, and here the substrate is breaking down and out of this becomes biogas and biofertilizers. Uh, the biogas <clears throat> is used, um, ha has been uh, mostly used for buses and cars, taxi cars in Linköping and and a lot of the local transportation buses uh, is run on biogas. Uh, and uh, also um, uh, now we do, you, you talked about, um, uh, I lost the name for it, but liquid biogas. Uh, so it can be used in the heavy industry and for heavy transportation as well. Mm. Can you uh, come to a conclusion, please, Linda? Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, the other product here is biofertilizer. It's um, bringing the nutrients back to uh, the agricul agriculture. And uh, this biofertilizer is certified. Uh, it has a specific certificate. So, so we can, it has good quality and so on. Yeah, and then we grow food and then it all starts over again, just like that. <laughs> so.
I'll, I'll stop there. Um, you asked me to show another picture, but I, I don't, I, I don't know if you think it's it's. Uh, no, let's stop let, let's stop here. I think yeah. you've elaborated uh, on the importance of pretreatment and the removal of plastics from the organic fraction yes. before it enters uh, the digester. Yes. I'm handing over to Mika, and then there are also a few questions uh, in the chat for you. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much, Lena. It was a very, very interesting uh, presentation, and I actually have um, a few questions. Yes. Um, so the first one is uh, in one of the first uh, slides. Um, you say that you introduced the green bag uh, in two thousand thirteen or twelve. Um, twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you say, but the collection system is the is the same. So what what? has um, changed the, the green bags? Is it mainly the, the motivation um, of the people? Um, just so I understand you correctly, it, it, that it, it, what, what have changed during this time? What has changed with the, with the introduction um, of the green bag? Uh, oh, uh, well, the amount of collected um, food waste ha has changed a bit. Um, usually, the, uh, there are many municipalities that collect food waste uh, in, in Sweden, and usually you get a bump. Everybody's on, on, on it uh, at the beginning when you inform very much, and this is new, and then it sort of levels out and maybe a little. So, but we are around 50%. Uh, uh, of um, we collect about fifty percent of it, but I see it as quite a challenge to reach those seventy five percent. But uh, we we will <laughs> try to manage this challenge as well. And, and do you do you know um, before the greens bags were introduced, what what was the collection rate before? Uh, well, it's um. We were early with uh, producing biogas uh, in Linköping. We started already in 1996, uh, but uh, then it was mainly produced by um, waste from food industry, slaughter, uh, waste from slaughter industry and, and that sort of thing. So, and uh, we, we were worried about the biofertilizer and uh, yeah, it was easier to handle a few uh, flows in than to deal with all of the households. But as time went on, more and more municipalities started collecting food waste. And, uh, and uh, I think people are more aware and it also is important with information. So then we took on this challenge as well. And we did that because also because of the national uh, targets, uh, we felt that we are um, we have been doing this with biogas for such a long time. Of course, we we as well <laughs> should be managed to keep, uh, to collect from the households uh, waste. Okay. Yeah. So, can I understand that it's mainly the um, the amount of municipalities who has increased, and not so much the um, the the percentages that is collected separately? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's quite uh, quite correct. Okay. Yes. Well, that, that, that's uh, and and I was to say that uh, to the biogas plant today we have about thirty to forty other municipalities uh, who uh, we treat. Um, sorry, I'm not used to speaking in English so much <laughs> these days. Uh, but we treat uh, food waste from about 30, thirty to forty municipalities there and. Uh, Half of them use the green bag system, so they uh, that also goes through the optical sorting facility. Then. Mm. But half of them directly to the. Okay, uh, so it's it's a very big biogas plant. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, then maybe as as the last like takeaway uh, question from my side, um, what would you recommend to to other countries from the West, from what you learned in Sweden? Um, how that they should um, improve their waste uh, collection rate, their separate waste collection rate. Uh, well, I, I think uh, we were very fortunate to have this site, uh, biogas site, uh, from the beginning when we started the collecting. 
from the household waste. So I'm humbling for that fact because that's a, it's, it's good to motivate people. We are doing something very good out of this. It, it, it becomes something good from their food waste. So a very small action leads to mm-hmm. something good that we create together. And uh, I would also say that really focus on communication, communicate, make people understand uh, and uh, know what they should do and why they should do it. So. Well, Lin Chirping is, uh, has gained a Europe-wide reputation for uh, uh, being strong on biogas. And, yeah. uh, so I think it also creates some uh, regional pride uh, to be participating in that. But yes. of course, your system with the green bags is quite ingenious, but it, uh, it works well if everybody has got a wheelie bin. So uh, that's what you mean with mm-hmm. the system doesn't have to be changed. So the wheelie bin uh, can be collected and uh, the bio waste is just one of the bags inside. Yes. So um, I have a que- some question from the audience. Um, mm-hmm. First of all, um, how do you, what's the technology to separate uh, uh, the plastic bag uh, from the organic waste? Yeah, it's, it's a screw press. Is that the correct term in English? Yes. I don't know. But um, if you see the illustration uh, here, so you, you, you push um, the bags through here and the waste goes out. There are small holes here. You see perforations. In, I see, uh, like a screen. Places. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, the yeah, the plastic bags goes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. clear. Yeah. And um, have you considered uh, not using plastic bags but uh, compostable bags uh, um, with a green color so that the op- optical sorter can equally recognize them uh, so that you do not need to have the separation step? Um, well, um, the, the plastic bag um, issue is, of course, important to us, uh, not at least with a focus on plastic bags these days and plastic and so on. Um, but um, for now, this is uh, how, how we need to do it. And it's, uh, they are made of recyclable plastic. But also, I am not the expert on, on the digestion steps, but I believe that the time in here is too short for it to be degraded. Yeah, I think uh, the question comes from somebody who uh, considers this collection system as an entry point for a composting plant uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. rather than oh. a biogas plant, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, yep. another question uh, is, uh, do you know how many, uh, what percentage of the bags which arrive uh, at the biogas plant for pretreatment uh, is damaged or do they um, overall arrive whole? Mm. Uh, uh, well, th- this is a challenge with the system uh, that uh, you have to have special bags. So, so uh, we um, distribute those to the households. So, so we know quite that sturdy. They, so yes, all right. Uh, this is all. But now um, we have a, a tax on the plastic bags uh, in, uh, in Sweden uh, on other pl- that the ones you buy in the store. And this has led to that people use paper bags and that's not so, so good. So that's uh, a challenge um, for the moment because it's important to put everything in bags and tie them well together. Because otherwise there is trouble in the optical sorting plants and um, so on. I see, I see. One final question. Uh, mm-hmm. How about uh, the organics inside of these uh, plastic bags? Are they rather pure or do you uh, have problems with uh, contaminants like uh, plastic inside of the plastic bag? Like mm-hmm. um, we do analysis. Uh, we follow, we do follow-ups on, of the certain areas uh, and uh, they actually show that it is quite well um, um, sorted, the waste in the bags. Mm -hmm. But here comes the the information part in. And the education and the long time uh, that you have it already. Yes. Okay. Uh, And of course, uh, some people uh, don't hear and don't do right anyway, but most mostly it works. Super. Thanks a lot, Linda. Uh, Please unshare your screen. Yes. Uh, so that I can hand over to uh, our next uh, uh, presenter. That was very interesting. You've seen the amount of questions from the audience that you've received. Okay. <laughs>
Last but not least, uh, we're having uh, uh, Christos uh, Karkanias from Anatoliki. That's the development agency of the Thessaloniki municipalities uh, in, in, in central Macedonia. And uh, Christos is uh, joining us from the SESME project. Uh, so the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Katarina. Uh, it's a real pleasure to participate in this uh, interesting event. Uh, I'll try to share my screen. And can you see it, please? Yes, but not yet full slide, full screen, I mean. Let me try. Uh, now you're unshared. Yeah, yeah, I know. No. What about now? No. Is it a full screen? No, not no. yet. Magda? We can show it for you. Yes. Ah, yes, no. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Uh, my name is Christos Kartenas and I represent Anatoly TSA, an uh, organization for local development in uh, Greece. I will uh, briefly present the case of Biogas Lagada, our generation from uh, organic waste. Um, so, Bagos Lagada is a power and heat generation plant in the region of South Macedonia and uh, Greece. Uh, as you said, uh, Katharina, this is a good practice on circular economy, identified in a very interesting uh, project, certain project on the circular economy. And uh, the owner of this plant is uh, Bagos Lagada SA, has the same name, and it started its operation in 2016. The initial budget of this investment uh, was 4.5 million euros, while the operation budget uh, reaches the 2 million uh, euros per year. Uh, in terms of the process, this includes the combustion of uh, biogas produced by anaerobic digestion of organic raw materials, um, uh, which are more or less 60% uh, of the generated livestock waste uh, in the area. Now, uh, in terms of the results of this uh, investment, and specifically about the waste treatment, um, 240 uh, tons uh, is a generation, uh, uh, per day, is a uh, absorption of waste per day, uh, while the total amount of waste uh, treated so far reaches uh, 400,000 tons. Uh, this includes uh, three categories, uh, livestock waste, representing the 65%, including cattle and poultry manual, uh, waste from crops, uh, almost 20% uh, of the total, including corn silas, olive oil, and fruit waste. And lastly, cheese production, about 10%, and uh, more specifically, cheese wheat. Now, about the uh, bulk generation, this is uh, uh, almost 8,400 uh, megawatt hours per year reaching the 42,000 megawatts per hour uh, so far. Uh, to send the residue of this uh, operation, uh, this is used for the fertilization of 800 hectares of agricultural crops in the near area. And uh, this is the interesting thing that uh, a few years ago we had only uh, a few similar plants uh, in Greece, but uh, now in 2022, we have eight similar plants operating in this region, in the region of Southern Macedonia, while the total number uh, in Greece is 40. Uh, there is still a large volume of livestock uh, waste untreated uh, so far, so uh, there's a big potential in uh, uh, more plants to operate uh, in our area. Uh, I can show you uh, two pictures from the anaerobic digestion plan. In the left, uh, you can see the two digesters, while on the right, the two storage tanks. And this is uh, a panoramic photo of uh, Bagos Lagada. This is my, uh, my brief uh, presentation. Uh, it's so short, but uh, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. You help us catching up uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very no, thank much, you. Christos. Uh, Mika, over to you. Yes, my, my question is related to um, the co-digestion of, uh, of, of bio-waste. Do you think this is something that um, would be possible in, 
in this biogas legata plant to increase um, to increase the the percentage of bio waste um, in the plant, or is it something that is difficult and needs to be tested uh, and so on? Uh, I, I know uh, from the owners that uh, there is a plan to uh, widen this uh, operation. Uh, they are investing nowadays uh, to maybe double the capacity of this uh, plant because, uh, as I said before, there's a big potential of uh, more and more uh, lives of waste. Uh, uh, I can say that uh, this uh, Walagada in the region of South Macedonia is uh, an area with uh, uh, main livestock uh, 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 plants and farms. So there is a big potential of this uh, operation. Okay, but uh, so th there's a big potential, I understand, in, in Greece to produce more uh, biogas. But my, uh, what I was wondering if, if you think it is possible to, um, to combine in one plant, like for example, this one, um, livestock manure together with bio waste, or is the waste too different to be combined in, in the same plant? Uh, I think uh, the technology in Greece is not so uh, updated, but uh, uh, and we have as well uh, a lack in, the, in our framework, in our waste framework. So I don't believe that uh, this could happen in one or two years. Uh, time is uh, what we need at a certain time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And, and a second question that, that I had is related to um, to biomethane production. Um, as far as I know, there is no, or at least not a lot of biomethane in Greece. Um, do do you see this change in the in the short term? Yes, you're right. There's not uh, any biomethane uh, plant. Uh, According to the last uh, waste framework, uh, this gives the, gives the opportunity to uh, enterprises to invest in such uh, technology. And uh, I believe uh, we have no time uh, to stand to all technologies. And we need in very few months to start uh, investing in such uh, operational technologies. Uh, as I said, we have no time. Okay, thank you. I think it's maybe uh, increased a separate collection of uh, bio waste from households uh, is uh, not implemented uh, uh, on a on a full scale covering every municipality. I think many municipalities uh, are only just about uh, uh, the designing uh, some systems. Is, is that correct, uh, Christos? Yes, of course. Uh, it's only, let's say, 4-5% uh, uh, treatment, how, separate uh, treatment of household waste uh, in the Greek municipalities. Um, we have uh, the, the last uh, waste framework uh, uh, in Greece, but uh, only a few, and I mean it, only a few municipalities have started uh, treating their uh, households uh, separately. Well, it is uh, still valuable uh, to start uh, uh, gaining experience with biomass uh, technology and operations uh, in the agricultural uh, sector. Agricultural wastes usually are easier to uh, digest because of the high purity. Let's say they don't come uh, with the contaminations of plastics, uh, um, which, which, which is the difficulty when you collect it from households. So uh, it's, it's already good to start uh, uh, a little bit. And then probably once you have introduced uh, a separate collection of bio waste at household level, uh, this waste stream will have to go somewhere. And then you already have the experience uh, and maybe some infrastructure. And then as Mika uh, suggested, some of the capacity might be used uh, uh, for that kind of uh, stream. How about you unshare your uh, screen and we use the last uh, uh, five minutes uh, to have a little discussion with our um, uh, little panel and uh, let's talk about um, the, the additional benefit of adding biogas before composting. I mean, um, it is clear that December 23, uh, household biomass, bio waste has to be collected separately. So this stream will be there. 
it will not be there fully, but uh, I think it will be starting uh, to grow. And there are just two methods uh, that count as recycling and that count towards the municipal recycling targets. That is either treating it in composting plants or uh, in biogas and then uh, composting. So of course this comes with more cost if you have to invest in the in the in the capital investment for a biogas plant as well. But let's uh, hear a little bit uh, our panelists. Uh, what do you think uh, are the additional benefits of adding biogas before composting? And um, so whoever wants to go first, uh, including uh, Mika, just take the floor. So I mean Pekka, Linda, and uh, Christos. If there are no uh, candidates, I can go first. Please. I think the, the advantages um, is very clear, but because you keep the advantages of the composting facility that you already have, and you have it as an additional um, technology, actually as an add-on to, to an existing plant or something that, that is already known to the municipality. Uh, and in addition to the compost, you will have um, renewable energy production which you can uh, use depending on uh, what, what is the situation in your municipality. You, you can choose if you want to use it for uh, fueling the trucks or for other applications. If you have, uh, well, some, uh, some composting facilities, they have a heat demand uh, on their plants. Um, so in that way, they, they could use partly in a CHP, use the heat um, and the electricity. And then another part, they can upgrade to biomethane um, and, and of course, you have indeed this investment cost, but it's something that you can also um, earn back in a, in a certain uh, in a certain time frame. Um, and I think especially um, the use of the biomethane for the uh, for for the um, vehicles which collect the bio waste. I think it's very interesting um, because we know that the the more heavy well the the the, the trucks. Uh, or the larger vehicles will be more difficult to electrify than the passenger cars in the future. So it's a very good opportunity to um, uh, to to green to green these uh, fuels and also to show uh, to your municipality, look, this is what we have done um, with your with your bio waste. This is why you are collecting this separately. And I think that this is a very nice uh, message to bring. That sounds great. Uh, uh, Pekka, Linda, Christos, do you have anything to add? I, I think that I must agree very much what Mike was telling that uh, I have, I also think that it's it's a good idea, it would be a better idea to, to utilize this biogas production opportunity here. Uh, Basically, for those reasons that Mika was explaining, yes. Yes, I and uh, of course I, I also agree to this. Uh, it's uh, good to use both energy and nutrients from the food waste to do the most of it, mm -hmm. if possible. Well, it helps us also to meet our uh, renewable energy targets. And uh, uh, I think uh, the point about uh, greening the transport fuels uh, is a very valid one. Mm. Yes. Now, no, the municipalities still have to uh, put up the money up front or they have to create framework conditions that make it uh, a commercial viable uh, activity for a private company. Uh, uh, Linda, in your case, uh, is the biogas plant uh, uh, publicly owned or is it uh, a private company that's operating it? Uh, no, it is owned by Tekniska Verken mm. uh, and uh, we are fully owned by the municipality. Mm. Yes. And also, um, <clears throat> it is a success factor, I think, that, uh, that there has been political agreement that to, to go for producing biogas over the years, over time, we wanted to support this. Development. Yes, it's been a very strong political signal in Sweden, that's true. Yes. We're coming to the end of our parallel session, but maybe as a final word, uh, I know that in Finland, uh, which has many biogas uh, plants that work with bio waste from households, uh, uh, very often uh, the commercial, uh, the economic viable uh, framework conditions have been uh, created and such plants are operated actually by private uh, companies. 
maybe with a partial ownership uh, of a public uh, body in there. I think in Lahti that's the case uh, and so on. So uh, it doesn't all have to be the burden uh, of the uh, municipal uh, budget. All right, I think uh, um, it is 45. It is uh, uh, time to leave uh, the parallel session. I believe uh, we should all be beamed uh, back into uh, the main uh, plenary room. And uh, so I would like to thank uh, our presenters uh, for the really interesting uh, contributions, are very diverse.